Messi now. Everyone on the edge of their seats. Messi going for goal! Join the fun, the excitement, the build-up to the World Cup, Russia 2018. Join Sam and Bayo right here on this station as they review notable World Cup moments, participating teams, individual players, coaches, match officials, and many more. You don't want to miss Russia Roundup with your hosts, Sam and Bayo, right here on this station. cities and 12 stadia will play host to the entire world from 14th of june to 15th july 2018 it is still russia roundup with yours truly bayon Le arashi and sam mbono as usual as we do it every week on this show for the last 10 weeks we'll be bringing you some unbelievable analysts some analysis so to say and of course we've been bringing you some soccer content courtesy our media partner FIFA on this show and of course I and Sam have been doing justice to all the groups so unfortunate that this is gonna be the last episode of this show for this particular World Cup Sam welcome to the show welcome to the last episode of sports Russia land up yeah I remember when we started when we set foot uh, to start this um, um, the um, you know, this um, World Cup preview mm -hmm. you know to put fans in the World Cup mood and um, I know that whatever thing that has a beginning, definitely. Uh, and and um, yeah, we, we, we've had a very wonderful um, ride right from the first episode to this last episode, and we believe that your viewers out there have really enjoyed um, this program and prepare your mind for the great oh, to come soccer show piece on edge that kicks off June 14th in Russia. Exactly, that is what it is. It is the greatest soccer show piece you can see anywhere. But of course, no nation has been able to build the record attendance that USA 1994 achieved when they hosted the entire world in 1994. Today, you're going to see the finals of that World Cup in USA 1994 between Brazil and Italy in that particular World Cup. But of course, you know, as we've been featuring uh, in the last uh, few weeks, especially as we mentioned last week on the show, we've been looking at the players that are not going to be a part of this soccer showpiece. Some of them, they are at the end of their career, and it would have been such a magnificent show for them to participate in this World Cup. But of course, sometimes destiny has a lot to do in this game of football and soccer, as we call it, in this part of the world. Sam, we're looking at Group E to H today on the show, and we have in Group E, Brazil. We have Switzerland, we have Costa Rica, and we have Serbia in that group. But of course, the player that will have been the biggest miss, of course, in the Brazilian squad and in this group, doesn't look like he's going to miss it. Neymar of Brazil. Starting from when the injury happened in France, something spectacular happened that I don't know if that will ever happen in Africa, but I hope it does one day, that a player would prefer his own doctor back in his home country than in France where his club is playing. Neymar was flew back to Brazil immediately after that injury in March just to be able to take care of him and make sure he's ready for the FIFA World Cup. What a player and what a nation. What do you think about this? I mean, when you have an asset like um, Neymar Jr. in your team, you will do whatever it takes for, you know, to get him fit for, you know, for World Cup. Definitely. Neymar, has been that shining light for Brazil ever since he, you know, came out, and he has carried the weight of the, the team, uh, Salazar, you know, on his back. But the fact is that I don't think he's going to be their star in this World Cup. But if you look at that team, hmm. that Brazilian national team, this is star studded. Okay, now am I going to talk about someone like Philip Coutinho? Excellent player. Excellent player. Excellent Even though he don't move from Liverpool to, to Barcelona, to he Barcelona. showed the same kind he of player. He showed that the we same saw kind of player in Liverpool. He, Liverpool. he scored a hat trick in the last game. Even though they lost, that unbelievable game. goals. You know, of course, in that particular goal. game. I'm going to talk to someone like Roberto Firmino. Even though he's an underrated player, so very, that dude, very underrated, I must say, work rate is like more than two hundred percent. He gives more than three percent of his work rate to a team. Are you going to, you know, 
this is a great player like, like Marcelo. The, the best left full back in the world. When he, he goes forward, he gives you that goal threat. When he defends, he defends excellently well. Thiago Silva. I go, I go forget him. Um, so, I mean, so, it's, so, it's, so it's this star star team, team, I star star And Neymar will not be the breakout star. You know. But so, of course, he will have been a big miss for them, Sam. We, we be must. A big miss. Uh, because you know the way Brazilian squad has always been set up over the past two or three decades. They won't have it. There's yes. always been that one, stand that down, one player. And, I, and maybe, just maybe, that was what really killed them at the 2010 World Cup that they depended solely on Robinho at that specific World Cup. But Robinho at that time, even though he still shone as a star, but wasn't really carrying that kind the of, of the that kind of weight that those kind of players, that the players like El Fenomeno, Ronaldo used to carry in his days, like the way uh, uh, Roberto uh, Romario used to carry in his days, Dunga in his days, and of course, now we have like Messi for Argentina, like now that we have Neymar. You remember Neymar at the 2014 World Cup was simply magnificent for them. Even though, and you remember his I injury went, cost them. them cost in the World Cup. It cost them in that World Cup. So you see the impact such player has on the team. I think if this national team of Brazil fails to win this World Cup, they will remind me of that national team that has that got Socrates, that had the best players, but they couldn't win the World Cup. It, it, is, it is just one of those things that happens in the game. You can never tell. So in this Brazilian squad, so to say, no, no, no surprise. there's no surprise. no surprise. There's no, no surprise, surprise at all. Serbia. Everybody that we expect to see so, in that team, uh, just from right Roma keeper Alisson to City keeper Ederson to Marcelo to Danilo to Willem to, in Chelsea to Diego Cantara in Bayern Munich, it is intact. No surprise. Fantastic. All right, for Brazil... That is that is definitely settled. For Switzerland, the outsiders, Costa Rica, their goalkeeper did so well. Uh, for uh, Real Madrid, as we Kelly know, uh, that Kelly Navas is actually one of the best goalkeepers in uh, Europe this season that just finished. And of course, Serbia also have Ivanovic. They have some of these. They have Mitrovic. We remember Mitrovic in that friendly against Super Eagles of Nigeria Mitrovic, in, yeah. in, in England. <coughs> Nigeria didn't take that friendly match seriously. And of course, we were punished for it. Sam, you remember I told you in that group that this group looks easy for Brazil, but they have to take every game as if probably it's going to be like a knockout game for them. Because any other group, any other team in that group are not also playing, Sam. Brazil has better to win this group. Okay, Brazil, I expected Please. to win that Please. group. But sometimes it doesn't happen the way I, you expect it. Exactly what I was hoping you are going to say. But of course, before we move to the next group, Sam, let us give the fans. And of, of course, I'll, be, I'll come back and I'll ask you this question. Do you remember the squad, the amount of uh, creative players in the 1994 FIFA World Cup? Roberto Baggio, Franco Baresi for Italy. For Brazil, Romario, Bebeto, uh, Tafarel. I mean, just to mention, but a few. Come to, come, come to Bulgaria. And it is. We have history touch cup. It is, was just a very, very, and of course it was hosted right here in the come United States. Give the fans the opportunity to witness that final again. We're taking you back memory lane to 1994 FIFA World Cup final between Brazil and Italy, and we'll be back to continue the show this wonderful evening. This is Russia Roundup with Sam and Bayo. Welcome back. It is still Russia Roundup, and of course, as we said at the beginning of the show, it is our final episode for the show, but wait for it. Soccer show is not going to end on this station, and of course, you're not going to be tired of seeing our face. We're going to be <laughs> continuing with more soccer actions and more soccer programming for you on this channel so do not worry about that and of course a plan is in the offing that we're going to bring those world cup matches your way just might bring it but we're still working on it we're working on all the logistics to see how it's going to happen we're trying to partner with some exclusive media partners that are going to be broadcasting the world cup live so you can watch them on this channel and of course we hope uh, that we are successful with that uh, particular request uh, that we have for you, our fans, to enjoy the World Cup. And of course, you don't have to be running around for subscription and all of that. Sam, that 1994 FIFA World Cup, what memory does it bring you? Roberto Baggio lost that penalty 
And of course, Tafarel was the biggest star for me, saving two, three penalty kicks for uh, Brazil, and of course, making Dunga to lift that World Cup that, that, that great year. Do you have any memory of that, US 94 World Cup? US 94 World Cup um, invoked a whole lot of memories for me. Yeah, am I going to start from Cameroon, who had Roger Miller, the oldest man to score a World Cup goal, or to Oleg Salenko, who scores his goals hmm. in a single game, or to Thomas Berlin, led them um, Sweden, or to um, um, Roberto Baggio and Dino Baggio breaking Nigeria heart, you know, in the second round second. of the uh, I can't remember. I was in Lagos. I was... See, I'm, I'm going to tell you a little story. You know, just two minutes. I was in Lagos then. Okay. And I think I was in junior high three back then. So I was living with my aunt, my dad, older sister. So she, we were living in Surulere. I did, uh, we living in Mugbe Johnson off of Adina Kusayan. So she sent me an errand to Mushi to go and buy this coconut candy because she run a store in front of a, a, a primary school where she okay. sells stuff. So I was on my way to Mushi in Lagos State mm -hmm. to go and buy coconut candy, Baba Dudu, and co we sell in the store. Mm -hmm. That game was going on. There was no Molu, there was no transportation of Molu uh, well, on well, the road well, you know, you know, to, to fly home. Dude, I have to hang behind a bus, a Molu bus, <laughs> to get to where I can watch that game. To tell you the passion. The passion I had for you know sports, you know, way back then. I even had to hang, you know. Behind the moon, dangerous you know, stuff. I dangerous. know what you're talking about. You know, that's the risk I took to see Spygo's play. And that woke up invoked memories for me. Like I've told you, um, um the Super Eagle getting to the second round for the first time, their debut. And we lost just we the lost. experience. That, mm -hmm. I mean we yeah, had we had a, an amazing yeah. team. Brazil coming uh, um on Bebeto giving us the, the baby, baby celebration. celebration. You know, the US and World Cup and I want one more thing. It opened the eyes of Americans to the sports called soccer, and that gave part of the major league. And soccer. and not only that, Sam, because I always say this: one of my mentors, Professor Patrick Omosagi, uh, he did normally uh, give me this a uh, point of uh, argument, which I think is very very right about. He told me the USA '94 World Cup actually also changed the game for FIFA. It showed FIFA how to make money. Yes, with the beautiful game because. USA made money. money. Average fan in a stadium for that tournament was 80,000 people. And in the World Cup final, they had almost 100,000 people watching, live, watching yeah. live. They paid to watch that tournament. And just like you said, a lot of things happened after USA 94 yeah, for America. It was, but it was also a, it was a soccer revolution. For the Federation of, uh, of, of Football, which is FIFA, it changed the game for them. They also made a lot of money and they learned how to also make more money with this tournament. So kudos to the United States of America. And of course, even though I'm, I'm, I'm an African and I'm very patriotic, but I live here. America gave me a home, gave Sam a home, gave us a home. <laughs> and of course, 2028, America is bidding to host the world again alongside Canada and neighbor country Mexico. And of course, our president has already given a verdict that, even though many of us are not really in support of the verdict of the president, but I, I also believe America deserves to host the world again. And of course, maybe, just maybe, if I had the chance, I might just be voting against my own continent. I, I, I mean, we've seen a, a two nation World Cup host. We've not seen a three nations and World Cup host. Um, um, USA, Canada, and Mexico are vying to host the 2028 FIFA, FIFA World, World Cup. Cup against a single Morocco B. Listen, listen, I will say it here categorically. You understand? I support the Morocco B. Because guess what? The northern part of Africa has been plagued with a lot of you know insecurity, war, and stuff like that. And religious prejudice. Hosted by Morocco, for them to really see that what you see on TV is not really what the North Africans can offer. And Morocco have hosted the FIFA World Cup twice, back to back, and it was a huge success. So, apart from South Africa, World Club Cup, you mean? Yes, the FIFA World Club Cup. So, apart from South Africa, who hosted the first on African soil, Morocco can successfully host, host the, the world. So, I will so I support Morocco B. I don't care, you know. The fact that you live I, in America. I don't care. I support Morocco B. Of course, you, you know, see, you see what, and and, 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 and and that's one of the things that really, really make different us. Like I said, I support my continent, Africa, 
But yeah, of course, I, 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 I would rather I want I, 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 I would rather want USA, Mexico, and Canada to be the hosts for me. I mean, I would rather want them to be the host, but and, of course, and, and also it to, it, to, it to improve and boost the economic value value of. I mean, of course, we we know what we so know we know what we know what the World Cup brings. America is rich, Canada is rich, Mexico is rich. They don't need those income. Africa need it. So go Morocco. You heard it from Sam there. Go Morocco. Go USA. Go Mexico, and of course, <laughs> Canada. Wherever that FIFA. Uh, committee and uh, uh, decide to, to give, to give uh, the to, World Cup yeah. to definitely will get all the support from us and of course from this soccer fraternity across the oh. entire world. Sam, there was a news that I uh, I came across and of course uh, I actually make this confirmation myself by writing to uh, the fan ID to the Russian government. Russia did something very exceptional with this World Cup they're hosting. Before we go to uh, the missing players from uh, the German squad. Uh, from Group F, the fan ID is all you need to be in Russia. In Russia, but of course, it came. It, 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 it has to do with a, a, a catch. Of course, you must also purchase tickets to be able to do it. But towards the end of May, they made it like okay. Even if you don't have a ticket, they know you are coming to their country to spend money. Yeah, apply for the fan ID. And travel, you don't need a visa. An average that's person going to Russia that's, that's, spend like 500 euros. That's exceptional. Apart from that's hotel and tickets. But, that, but that's exceptional. That's something, that's a very smart thing to do, I think, because they are making good use of technology in this particular circumstance. What do you think about it? See, How do you feel about that concept? It's a very, very, it's a very beautiful concept because you find ID encapsulates all your information as a fan, mm -hmm. your passport number, your nationality, when you when when, when, when you arrive the country, and when you expect to leave the country. Yes, you know they said so, they said they said all must leave the country by twenty fifth of July. So 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 if, ten days after the World so Cup. So I think after the World Cup, they may not declare that fan ID an illegal document. So whoever is found with that document, you are illegal. In that you are country. not illegal in that it's, country. You know, so it's as much as it was a smart way to reduce cost. And processing time. It's also a smart way know, to get to know the illegals. I think it's also good, you know, like to crack down on on those who are overstaying their visas. Or, or, or whoever or that plan, chooses to stay behind. Or plan to do anything, but listen, listen. I'm not going to say that because you know we know how it is. It's you a know, very people, sensitive people topic. People trying to seize the opportunity to see it's how a, they can. And it's a topic. Yes, safe from that topic. All right, let's go to Group F, Sam. Germany, Mexico, Sweden. And of course, Korea Republic. One of the saddest news, of course, is that the Mexican captain sustained a very terrible injury in his tendon just last week, and he's not going to be going to the World Cup. Sometimes on some days are like that. Even this Champions League finals happening on um, tomorrow, you that, know. Or that, or, that, or, or that has happened already. Champions yeah, League. That, final <laughs> that, um, yeah, that happened already, you know. Sometimes, you know, the last match of the season, you know, put players in that um, danger of getting injured mm -hmm. and for you know they are out of a major tournament. Mm. You know, but the fact is that even if a player is injured, so in San Diego take his place. True. <laughs> True. True. You have to agree with that. So in San Diego take his place. Okay, so Germany, were there any surprise in that group for you for going that break? No, not really, but but I, I went um I did a little bit um digging and I you know you know look at the highest scoring Germans this season, um Neil Peterson of Freiburg. And guess what? Top scoring Germans are from Bayern Munich or Dortmund. From Freiburg, Hoffenheim, Hanover, Simona. and Leverkusen. Smaller teams. Hmm. Thomas Müller had only eight goals for, for, for Bayern. Robert Lewandowski is a Polish. He's not German. He's not German, yeah. So that, you know, he's the top scorer in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Bundesliga. But the top scoring German is Neil Peterson of Freiburg. He got 15 goals this season. Um, followed by Uti of Hoffenheim, 14, but he, he didn't make the cut. Four Krog of Hanover, 14 goals, he didn't make the cut. Voland of Leverkusen, he didn't make the cut, 14 goals. Only Tim Werner of Leipzig, 13 goals, made the cut. Wagner of Bayern Munich, 12 goals, didn't make the cut. Sadie Ganabri of Hoffenheim, 10 goals, I know, I, I, at least I, was, I, I knew he played some friendly match for, 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 yeah. for the senior team. Gomez, Gomez and Müller. Gomez and 10 goals for Stuttgart, Miller 8 goals for 
for Bayern Munich, so mm. they all made the call. So really and truly, there is no um, much no surprise, in surprise that you know, for the Germans. We see um, they have Müller, Ozil, um, Royce, um, yeah, Mario Gossi, they made the call too. You know, work, so, the World Cup winner for them. He scored that goal. He scored that goal at the 2014 yeah, World Cup, and yeah, that was actually the headline when the when the when the news of that group came out that uh, the the winner the, the scorer of the goal that gave Germany the World Cup is World not World going, going to the World so Cup. So Antoine Rudiger of Chelsea, you're a Chelsea fan, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, he made, made it cut. You know, that's a, dec good. a decent player. Decent I think player. I think he had a very decent decent season with Chelsea, and maybe just maybe. He might have a, 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 a better season next season. Yeah, Lero Sane, Man City, there. Ike Goodgan is Medic. there. You know, so there's no more surprise. Joshua Kami and Kim Mesut Nitsch. Ozil, as yeah. usual. Ozil is there. He, the but usual Ozil suspense. performs for national team more than he does for Arsenal. Arsenal. Yeah, true. So, yeah. I mean, the, 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 so he everyone it. says that maybe just Wenger didn't, and hopefully Unai Emery, who was just announced a few days ago, might just be able to discover the best in Mesut Ozil again. Of course, before we go to uh, Group G now, let's take uh, a, a breather now. And of course, we're going to bring you something very special again. Of course, it is the last episode, so it's going to be very, very special. He is called Gaza. Do you remember that player? Of course, his Paul name Gascoigne. is Paul Gascoigne. Gascoigne. He's 50 years old now, and he is, like him or not, I think one of the finest midfield players that have come out of the world and of course England. I wouldn't want to say he's the finest because after him we've had Steven Gerrard, we've had Frank Lampard, we've had some other incredible players that have done so well for English but of course the Gaza himself took Ger England all the way at Italian 90 and of course it was a very very tearful one for him. I need to see that short documentary courtesy of our, FIFA, of our partner FIFA package regarding Gaza's uh, performance at the Italian 1990 World Cup. It is titled Gaza Tier. Of course, we'll be back and continue the show. Messi now. Everyone on the edge of their seats. Messi going for goal! Join the fun, the excitement, the build-up to the World Cup, Russia 2018. Join Sam and Bio right here on this station as they review notable World Cup moments, participating teams, individual players, coaches, match officials, and many more. You don't want to miss Russia Roundup with your hosts, Sam and Bio, right here on this station. Welcome back. It is still Russia Roundup with Sam Houston and Bayon Lee Arashi. Of course, it is our last episode of the show, and we're celebrating it. We're celebrating ourselves for a job well done. Uh, of yes, course, and of course, on the back. appreciating uh, this TV station for giving us the platform to uh, showcase our talent and, of course, to be able to give you guys soccer content uh, of the highest order just for you to be in a very good preparation for uh, the FIFA World Cup. Sam, what do you think about, or what do you remember about Paul Gascoigne? I remember him as the crazy one, of course, at the same time as the talented one. Paul Gascoigne, even for club and country sports and for, for national team, you know, Paul Gascoigne will remain an iconic figure. You know, after Italian 90, you saw him in Euro 96, when England, you know, nearly, you know, went all the way, and if not, I mean, you know, one, it of happened. one of those are happening in sports. So Paul Gascoigne, you know, has been an iconic figure for the English football family. But he had to fight for alcoholism, which nearly cost him his life. I mean, it destroys him, man. Destroyed, so, you know, I mean, you know, he, he, he was already gone. But thank God that, you know, his friends didn't, you know, let him, you know, all by himself. He came to the U.S., um, Arizona, Phoenix, for treatment, you know, even though he didn't last. But then you know that shows that he has friends and as, family. As, I saw, I saw the, I saw the image of him used uh, for uh, the uh, on, on Wikipedia, and it was really, really, really uh, not, he, a, not, he not, was, not, was not, a, he not, not a happy one. Not a happy one. Of course, we, we we move on quickly now to England in Group G. Ah, with Belgium, 
Panama, Tunisia. I remember you and I have a very big discussion about this group. And I was telling you that it might not be as easy as Belgium and England coming through this group. Sam, and I also remember telling you that Panama, Iceland, and I can't remember exactly now who are going to be the first in this World Cup. Senegal, I believe. Oh, Senegal is not the first. No. Are going to definitely be some, some sort of surprise in that group. But of course, there were some surprises in the English squad. Joe Hart did not make it. I know he's not going to make it. Why did you think so? Because he was a Premier League, he was a Premier League goalkeeper all season. Okay, but what was the problem for West Ham? Look at his performance for West Ham all season. West Ham only got relegated. Even uh, 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 Andre, you know, displaced him as number one for West Ham. So, what do you think is yeah. going to? What do you think is going to be the number one for England? When it comes to, when, is it going to be the, the the Everton goalkeeper? No, Jack Butland is England number one. Hmm. Then Jordan Pickford is number two. Nick Pope should be there. Number what two. was your biggest shock in that group to miss out? I didn't have no shock. I know Jack Wisher ain't going to make it. I don't you think know, he wasn't going to make it. I, 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 know he I mean, because I believe that Jack Wisher actually did very well for Arsenal. I think he did. I, th I mean, and I saw his tweet uh, on, on Twitter, and I actually have to, like, tweet my support back to him that I believe, I also believe he deserves to be to have a call-up in that squad. I mean, he I don't, I don't a, see... I have a call-up, but then look at I don't see friend. any other, any player that is above him among some of those players that were picked i don't see, i don't see it maybe it's not me maybe it's me personally Jesse but Dinger, i could see that some of the english some of the english Dele fans Dyer, were actually were Dele Ali. divided as well i mean Dele Ali deserves to be there but somebody just who i mean something has to young? Be, maybe but everybody, Henderson? everybody was saying the fact that ashley young can play not just a role. Actually, you can play left back, can play right, right back. back. He can also he, play as a right he, winger or left winger. He deserves to be that, that might just be the reason why why, he's there. why Ashley okay. Young is making. Jonah Henderson. Henderson is the powerhouse. He's, he's, a, he's a fantastic midfielder. He's I mean he and he is leading. He the he's that leading team. Liverpool ex excellently well. But of well. course, Harry Kane is going to be the captain of that squad, well, I, I, which I also think is a slap on Gary Cahill uh, by Southgate. I mean, some of the Eng the, way the English do things sometimes you get to think that how do they reason i mean it's like you looking at john michael will be in the national team squad and give Leon Balogu, Kelechi, Leon Acho, a captain bank i mean i think that's going to be like a big slap on the face i i, I think that there should be a a, a kind of a hierarchy called all the where you know captains have been successful in national teams maybe from the old days if he say he doesn't want it they, so I think looking at players like um, Gary Cahill, you know, but they are looking at the fact that when you make Harry Kane the captain, he will bring out, he will give more for the national Probably team. Light, you know. light, light, lighten them more. Lighten them more. So let's see how that works about this national team of England. They have decent players, you know, from Jack Butland to, to Trent Arnold, and Arnold Alexander to Lana who is on standby. You know, Jamie Vardy, good player, this good season. Good, good, good finisher. Raheem Sterling, fantastic for City. Who again? Kyle Walker, good for City. Dele Ali was good for Spurs. Marcus Rashford was good for United, even though um, Jose didn't give him enough chance. But he give him chance. You see the form. He takes it. That was, I said, look at Liverpool, Man United. He was a shining star. Yeah. A brace. And that was it. He threw them all. That's true. So what That's happens true. when he gives Martial the Martial such opportunity? Same opportunity. Will he take it and, and perform? Hmm. Okay, there is still more to look at in this particular group G and H, but of course we have to take another break now. And fans, we're taking you because it's not going to be our final episode. We want to show you the last four games the Super Eagles, your darling Super Eagles of Nigeria, played at the FIFA World Cup in 2014. But of course, in this break, we're going to show you the first two games against Iran and of course against Argentina. Nigeria could not score a goal against Iran. The game ended nil-nil against Argentina. Five goals are feared. And I am believing it is getting closer and closer, closer between Nigeria up. and Argentina. This summer, I don't want to predict anything, but I think a lot can happen between Nigeria and Argentina. Enjoy those two highlights. I will be back on the show to round off this week. And, of course, the final episode of Russia Roundup. This is Russia Roundup with Sam and Bayo. Welcome back. It is still Russia Roundup with Bayonle Arashi and Sam Mbonu. 
of course, we're still continuing to have a look at Can group. Okay. <clears throat> Welcome back. It is still Russia Roundup with yours truly, Bayonle Arashi and Sam Mbonu. Well, to H. And of course, looking at the players that are not going to make it to the FIFA World Cup. We know Gigi Buffon is not going to be there. We know Alexis Sanchez of Manchester United is not going to make it. We know that many of those other great, great stars are not going to be at the World Cup. But Sam, for Belgium in Group G, Thierry Henry and his main his, his, his head coach Robert decided Martinez. to drop Nyangolan off Roma. And of course, I watched Nyangolan in the 2014 World Cup. I think he was the best player for Belgium. And I also watched him this past season. I think he did very, very well, especially against that game that they overturned against Barcelona in the Champions League. Do you think he had a headache here or maybe something just went wrong and he decided to drop this player? Because as soon as he was dropped, he said, I'm done with the national team. I'm not playing again. He retired from football. Yeah, I saw that tweet too, you know, when that um, when Roberto Martins announced his, um, his 28-man preliminary squad, you know. He wasn't considered for 28. But I think that was a slap on his face because... Exactly, ex exactly my feeling. instrumental for Roma. To make it the last and also in the qualification, the Sam. You know, he was also instrumental for Belgium in the in the qualifiers. But sometimes, you know, we are just outside looking in. I mean, we got exactly. You know, we can only, you know, say what we know, see. What we see, but the coach is the one who draws the tactical plan. He exactly. knows where this player fits in. Okay, if I have this player that can give me three, four, five role play in a team, and then I why would I want to leave him for a player that only fits on one his or own? two? One or two rows. So they look at a whole lot of stuff. Agreed. You know, and if you look at this Belgian team, I keep saying it that they have the right players to, to go get, all the way. Or to go all the way in the World Cup. But those sitting in the dugout, how well and they're gonna would they put them blend together. the team to achieve results? Look at a team, even though it in hazard, you know, didn't really do quite well for Chelsea. I mean, he had like maybe you know, 65, like, 65 yeah, percent but performance. Yeah, they end they end the season with a cup, with something which is you know which is very good. You know, player like you know Romelu Lukaku, you know, was okay for United. Kevin De Bruyne was, was in, in unbelievable Kiru for Manchester, for Manchester City. City. You know, uh, Christian Benteke was on and off for Crystal, Crystal Palace. Uh, Palace. Toby Adewit was good for, for, for Spurs. Spurs. Mr. Bashway, I thought they said he's injured. Yeah, he's injured, but he's going to be fit enough for the for the okay, World Cup. Okay, he's going to be fit enough. That's okay. You know, you know, um, Jan Vitonin was okay. You know, for, was was top class for, for Tottenham yeah, Hotspur yeah, as well. Yeah, Simeon Mignolet sat in the bench, and Loris Carlos have taken his position. So, but whenever he's given a chance, he's always he's always performed yeah, decently. But, but uh, yeah, he does. But then you know he's. T -B 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 but of course, I mean that so that, that is that is. So this Belgian squad. Is okay, but let's see how Martinez and Terry Henry will blend this world. Well, let's see how Martinez and Henry are going to take this squad. Of course, a lot of people were actually thinking and hoping that Terry Henry will join Arsenal after the FIFA World Cup. But of course, we don't know yet who's going to work with Unai Emery. Arsenal might just want one of their own old war horse yeah, to, to work with him, but we've not had such him. announcement from him yet. Understood. I think they are giving him a time to settle down and really do his own job. So, Belgium, not too many surprises, but of course, you feel uh, it was a slap on Nyangulan's face to be dropped for that particular uh, World Cup. In Group H, which is, the final gr which is the final group, we have Poland, we have Senegal, we have Colombia, and we have Japan. For Senegal, they dropped their striker uh, that, that played, for, that played in, the, in, the, in the Chinese league, Dembaba. Could, did not make Didn't it, make it yeah. for that World Cup. And of course, Ali Sisse said he chose the guys he believed are going to be uh, decent for him in that World Cup because he believes it's also a very, very good chance for Senegal to probably do very, yeah, very yeah. well at this World Cup. Is there any surprise for you in Group H, Sam? No, no. So, so, Poland, this, Senegal, this Senegal, Colombia, and team, Japan. You know, okay. I see Musaso, I see Sadio Mane, you know, even though Dembaba you know, was dropped, you know, he's he's gonna be alright. He chose to move to you know to to China, you know, for the money. 
But um, Senegal is a decent squad. They have Frasako, he's there, Sadio Mane, I said before, Musa So, and then um, Kali, then Kolebali. So, I think he's a nice one. Coming to Poland, you also you see Lewandowski. You know, he's the leader he's of that a, He's the main man. He's the main man in that team. And I think um, Polish national team, you know, will be okay, but they... But I think Senegal they, are going to, Senegal are going to wipe them. Martin and Sam, you remember I told you when, when we had a look at this group? I told yeah. you. I said They're Senegal might go all the way because our own Super Eagles defeated Poland. Yes, even though and they didn't look. I mean, of course, whatever they say, but we know we know we defeated them. But if that if that's a World Cup final, we won the World Cup. That's it. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a game of result, as we've always said. Yes. And of all these players knowing fully well that 1-0, 2-0, 2-1, two two as long as you get the three points, the position just says, play seven games and you become a winner the, of the World Cup. It doesn't matter what the shot on target, you know, says. You know what, what, what I look at? Scholar. Okay, so we've had a look at from group A to H. Now, the big question is, for you, who is going to be that player that you think you're going to miss the most that is not going to the World Cup? That player, I think I'm going to miss the most of them watching the World Cup. Uh, looking at the list of players I have here, I think Danny Alves. Hmm. I mean, it could, it could have been, it, it, it could have been a, uh, an unbelievable squad if, if they have Marcelo in the left, Danny in the right. You, you, Danny and Marcelo left and right? It would have been... That 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 um, Brazil defense just solid. Could have been solid. Hmm. And also followed by Buffon. Well, I mean, maybe maybe Alves wouldn't have been my pick, but I think that was that was very 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 smart one by you. I mean, he he was an incredible player for FC Barcelona, and when he moved to PSG, we all thought maybe he was he was, he was out, going to relax. Still. But no. we still see the same Danny Alves. Danny Alves that we all know, fighter, so say, a miss, great player, miss, a great leader on I the field. I will miss his work rate for that. Um, and leadership as well. Yeah. Leadership. leadership as well. Well, for me, I think Buffon is definitely one of the players I'm going to miss the most. I Char think. I, I, I think he, even though I, I wasn't happy with the way he ended his reign in Europe, a lot of people keep saying. Uh, he, the, the referee deserves all the all what he gets. How did then end his career? Exactly, in the but but I always say that maybe some of these players are just maybe these things are just written in the stars. They are that human. It is, it is it is meant to happen there like is. that, and he he's not going to play the FIFA World Cup. Maybe the next time we're going to see him in the FIFA World Cup maybe will be in the, in the dugout uh, yeah. for for uh, a coach as a as Italian coach or something like that. We all know that Roberto Mancini has taken the uh, leadership role uh, for. Uh, the Azuri now, and of course we know that that's going to probably give, bring another emergence to uh, the Italian national team. Of course, he has invited his son, his bad boy son, back Balotelli. to the squad for the friendly matches. He wants him to be to be there. You can't. I mean, I've watched some Balotelli of the. I've watched, the watched some. <laughs> I've watched some games in Europe. In 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 the in, in the, the French league. French league on. You know, so if you invite him. I don't, I don't say uh, the but of course, with, with the with, with the with the fracas both of them have had in the past. I mean, the videos are on YouTube. They are on social media. They have a, they you have see, a very good. Report. That's a professional to me. I mean, I mean, I, I think Manchin is a fantastic, fantastic yeah. father and a leader to still bring such a player back. Some someone that look at you in the face whenever you take him off the game, and you still feel okay. I still want him. I will say, I want it's that. It's like this. I will whoop you. I will whoop you with this to a, 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 a switch. <laughs> But you still gonna do that? Maybe, and I want you to do. Maybe that was what really uh, <laughs> affected Antonio Conte for Chelsea. Yeah. A lot of people feel it. Maybe he should have managed Diego Costa very, very well because definitely that's that was one of the major challenge. That was one of the major challenge he had this past season for Chelsea for letting his main striker Diego Costa on the field for Chelsea against any team is it enough. Is. is enough fair for, for that team. But of course, it is what it is, guys. That's it on Russia Roundup for yeah. this week, and of course for the for now. For now, of course, maybe by another time, by another World Cup in 2022, or another great tournament coming up, we'll be back on the show. Sam, we're we'll back on the show, but we're gonna take a, a selfie on the show, man. I, I, I want you to if, say if, something. If, if, 
Hold on, you know, if listen, listen, hold on. If it, 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 it's been a very, you know, jolly good ride from the first episode to last episode with my friend Bayo. You know, I remember when we used to go on each other that on too? Facebook. Chelsea, Liverpool, Panthers, uh, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, we, we, we used to, I mean, I mean, because that's just the way the game is for yeah. us. We just so right like, now we're we'll going to we'll take a uh, Russia Randolph selfie. Okay, so we're doing <laughs> that. And, and it's, we'll you, you guys are going to see Randolph right on the show. On TV Live on the show for the final time. Yeah. All right, guys. So we'll see you guys again another time, of course. It's been my pleasure bringing this show uh, your way. And, of course, with Sam Mbono, of course. And, of course, the production crew at Vanya Television. They've been wonderful. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for thank all your support you, you, uh, you, on you, the you. show. And of course, hopefully, we'll keep this partnership stronger and we'll be back another time on TV. My name is Bayon Le Arashi. On behalf of Sam Mbono, we'll say bye-bye and God bless you guys. Bye now. I said I'm okay. Okay.